<laughs> All right, Pedro. Well, how's it going, uh, dude? What's up, brother? How's it going? Oh, man. Thank you. First of all, let me say thank you for taking the time today, dude. Uh, I'm so course, excited to be digging into this shit. This is going to be awesome. I, I, I Good, love uh, the band. Uh, <clears throat> love the work that you do, dude. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good questions. Good questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I try to do, you know, especially like with everything, you know, I, I try to, you know, like look back and kind of listen to enough interviews just as far as, you know, some things that maybe people have already answered or some things that they've gone over, over and over and, you know, kind of take a little bit of a different angle. Uh, but, you know, as far as like, you know, being a drummer myself, uh, you sure. know, looking into some of the things and some of your history with bands and shit, so stoked to get into. So, uh, like I say, you know, thank you very much. Uh, and, and, and to start off here, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of bring it all the way back as far as earlier interest from whether it was parents or a family member or friends, uh, who was, you know, initially inspiring you for some of the earlier stuff that you were listening to? And what was some of the stuff that was being introduced to you that you really took a liking to? Um, my, my, both of my sisters were a pretty big, pretty big impact. Um, they listened to like a lot of, a lot of hip hop, a lot of, uh, like Chicago freestyle music, but my okay. cousin, uh, Dave, uh, and I pretty much kind of grew up side by side. So we got to go see Blink. We got to go see like all the drive through records bands really early on together. We were in our first bands together. We played music together, basically just grew up together playing. So he had a really big impact too, cause he, uh, he had a CD burner. So I could fucking see all his music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he was just constantly feeding me shit, you know. So he, he okay. th those two, those two. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, those those are probably the biggest impacts. I mean, I had a bunch of friends too that were listening to cool shit at the time. Um, but yeah, my cousin and my two sisters, man, they really kind of fed me a bunch of shit, you know. Was that something too to where like every once in a while you would stumble across like a, a mixtape or like a mix CD and it wouldn't even have titles and you're just listening to shit and yeah. you kind of stumbled on something like, whoa, what is this? You got to tell me, show me more. Yeah, that was, he, uh, he would make me like full records, honestly. Oh, um, he would awesome. give me like, he would give me just, he'll just burn the full record and I'll just, just get so like, it'll be like a madcap record or like a, oh, okay. Like, a, like, you know, the starting line record or something. I'm a big pop punk <laughs> kid, so we were listening to a lot of that stuff. But, um, yeah, it was more so just full records, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> okay. the same okay. records, yeah. yeah. And, sure. You know, and it's funny, too. I mean, like, you mentioned that when I was younger, that was always kind of, like, my thing personally was I always, like, had fun with, you know, like, soundtracks or mixtapes or whatever. But, you know, as far as, like, when it came to something that I really like to hear. I wanted to hear the whole full, you know, full CD. I wanted yeah. to hear how it was intended, you know, like what was the yep. shit that was surrounding around it, you know? So uh, yeah. I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's, that's something that touches on, you know, different people and, and even yeah. more so, you know, like I had a lot of friends who were really into the singles and like, Oh, you know, I don't need to hear the rest. It's like, no, fuck that. Yeah, I want to no. hear the rest, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. And if, if the, and if the record sucked, like I just, I would never listen to it again. You know, like, <laughs> right. it, un unfortunately there's records I go back and I listen to and I'm like, shit, actually I like probably more than half of this record, but I just yeah. didn't vibe the, with the, the way the track listing was and all that stuff. So right, right. I'm a, a big, big record uh, front to back. It's got a, it's got a vibe, man. I love it. Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny, and I've kind of touched on it before, but I think that's where the true crossover for me as far as, you know, from like metal or maybe even to say new metal at the time, you know, stuff that like people sure. were into the yeah. crossover into punk or hardcore records. You know, you had stuff like H2O and Hatebreed, you know, yeah. and you listen to those and it's like, man, front to back, this is fucking no filler. Like, this is yeah. rad. You know, it's this is the stuff I want to hear. Straight to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Now, as far as with, you know, various crossover opportunities, you know, you had, you know, kind of the 80s, 90s, where it was like movie soundtracks, you had video game soundtracks, uh, yeah. you know, skate tapes, if you were into any of that stuff. Tell us about discovering a band from any of those routes. May, may it be even like uh, album cover art. And uh, what initially drew you in, uh, you know, uh, discovering a band through any of those different things? Um, Tony Hawk was, I mean, obviously the biggest one. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Dave Mira had a BMX game. Yes, actually. dude. Yeah, I loved and it. like uh, Sublime was on that shit. Yep. I Rage. Who else was on it? Rage was on that. Yeah. And that was like you know they were on the radio and shit around that time, but I think they had some other like hitters that weren't singles. I want to say I don't know. That was I. That's just one game I remember where I was like, oh, I think I like Sublime. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. I think I want to listen. I think I want to listen to Sublime, and then you know you go and buy the record. But um, what I else? That. What other, actually, like, uh, uh, Vice City, 
Grand Theft Auto Vice <laughs> okay. City got me yeah. into like weird dancey shit from like the seventies, <laughs> eighties. Okay. Like like uh like yacht rock and all that stuff. Like it, yeah. it it's just like in my brain now. So when it's on at bars, <laughs> I'm like I'm like this actually this goes hard. Yeah, uh, right. So like you totally yeah, stuck in a Quentin Tarantino yeah, movie, like yeah, definitely. This, this works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying to clean the kitchen and shit, and I'm putting on Yacht Rock, you know. Like, <laughs> all right, like, this, this yeah. put me in a good mood. I guess. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So with with the Dave Mira, uh, with yeah. that video game, you know what comes to mind is I remember the Cure. I can't remember what song it was. Uh, the Cure um, was on it, but I can still. Yeah, I, I can't remember what the hell. I know the melody and everything with it, but I can't yeah. remember what exact song Damn. it was. And I remember looking the album up after because I loved the song and I was not into it at all. I was like, oh, oh this, no shit. This, this, this is not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the track, but I wasn't I wasn't into the band much for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, my cousin uh, or Dave fucking loves. Uh, he loved uh, the Smiths. So we would oh, try yeah, to okay. cover the Smiths. Uh -huh. And uh, it never worked, but <laughs> he's a uh, uh, big Cure fan too. So I ended up going down that hole for a minute. Okay. And then, Further and in then, life, I, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the cure a lot more. Sorry, I, I didn't mean uh, no, 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 to, you're good, to you're interrupt good. you there. I, uh, you know, I, I do appreciate the cure. I mean, as far as, you know, I think it was just kind of like that time in life where I was like, ah, I don't want to, I want to yeah. listen to Slayer and, you know, fucking yeah, any you sort, sort of, of punk fast. I can get a hold of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just want to go fast, man. I totally but you were mentioning your, your cousin and uh, and having like the Smiths and all that too, like that kind of brought you down that rabbit hole as far as was there was there different, you know, uh, kind of styles into, you know, what you were getting into from that type of stuff? Um, from like the Cure mm -hmm. vibe? And the Smiths. Uh, the Smiths, I mean, I would, I, that would honestly kind of tap it out there. I don't really think mm, there was okay. much more... Um, and like the Smiths just have this weird like Mexican background. Like kids just for some reason like my sisters like the Smiths, but they okay they don't listen to anything like that either. So it's yeah. like a weird, <laughs> okay. you know, it's it's a weird like, crossover. Yeah. But that okay. that sound that sound at that time didn't really like I didn't really get it. Mm -mm. Like I listened to it and shit, and I like know the songs, but it like you said, it took me years later to to realize that oh I do like I do like uh you know. It doesn't really mix with this, but like the Kinks or like just something bands that are like around that time frame that are older. It took me a minute to get into like bands that were or that were coming out in the seventies and the eighties. Yeah, Cause for I, sure. Because I was like, I was like, fuck that, I don't like that. Like, <laughs> this sounds bad, you know. Like the, the record sounds bad, you know. Like these drums yeah. sound like okay. tin. Uh, tin hit. But uh, oh, shit. but my it's kind of full circle. You guys, you guys yeah. are doing like a cover of the Kinks, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it okay. took it took like Kevin, uh, our singer. Um, he's really big into into that rock and roll shit. And um, I mean, we've been playing together for like seven years. I want to say on mm -hmm. and off. And he's slowly like worked his way into my brain, like not by <laughs> okay. not by force, just by like being around it, you know. Yeah. Right, so I mean, right. me and me and the lady were at at home cooking dinner the other night, and I had just a full Kinks playlist on, and like just jamming, like just jamming seventy shit, eighty shit. Yeah. You know? So like, it is full. It is full circle. Battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, why? I'm like, what? Well, I'm just in the mood for it. It's like yeah. that yacht rock shit. You just end up in the mood. You're like, all right, cool. I'll jam yeah. So as far as like a local scene, as far as local shows or different things, you know, I kind of wanted to touch on first going, you know, discovering a, a local music scene. Uh, and, and going to local shows, and then where does a, a Big Bill concert come in for you as far as going to see a big concert? The first, uh, well, we we played shows super early, so we were constantly playing, like, the early, um, this place called Mojo's, which was, like, a coffee house in Orland, I think it was. Um, we played that first iteration of that venue there. Um, so we, like, kind of knew all the pop punk bands and all the pop punk kids, Mm -hmm. um we grew up with like the real friends dudes the knuckle puck guys and we were like kind of all in that scene together um okay. but the first big show shout out to my uncle too my cousin's dad is the one that took me to all my shows at first but uh the uh blink Way 2 pop disaster um uh, uh blink oh, 2 green wow. day uh 2002 that was a fucking huge show 
I had to, like, that fucking, yeah, the, the fuck sign lit up on fire. Like, just, <laughs> like, my mind was blown. Like, I was like, you could do this shit? Like, <laughs> right. like I, I had already listened to, like, the Mark, Tom, and Travis show, so I knew, like, all the little jokes verbatim. Like, I can, I can say every joke, like, in, on that live CD. <laughs> but, seeing it, but seeing it live, I was like, oh, they actually fucking do this. Like, they're yeah. just, yeah, that, that totally changed my life. And then seeing Green Day and... That was it was just so fast and shitty, like it was awesome. <laughs> you know, they're playing this gigantic uh, amphitheater, so that was that was the big one. To this day, I, I always talk about that show. That one really changed my shit. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And and now, I mean, as far as like the the initial local shows that you remember seeing oh, and going to, yeah. as far as friends, uh, are any of those venues still around, or, or uh, how did you discover local shows? Um, the Fireside Bowl was something I grew up by, like by the Fireside Bowl. Okay. Um, which is a pretty iconic Chicago venue. It's, it's a the bowling old, alley, right? It's the bowling alley. Yeah, yeah I grew up okay. like I grew up like two, three blocks from there. Um, okay. But I saw Bayside there when it was like maybe two thousand, two thousand one. Oh. Um, it's still oh. there. Um, it's nicer now. It doesn't smell like piss anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if they. I think they might still have shows and shit there. But um, that was a big one. Mojo's was one back in the day that's not there anymore i'm trying to think man there were so many like shitty weird there was one in okina that sounded that sounded terrible it was just a giant like garage it sounded like shit man it was really bad. <laughs> um, Jesus. i'm trying to think honestly the metro like i was playing the metro was pretty crazy oh, okay. that's an iconic like freezing my ass off in line waiting for like under oath to play you know yeah like, right. That, that, <laughs> right that was that was a pretty big one I'm trying okay. to think of other iconic like Chicago. Even even you mentioned in the fire the the fireside there too because like that yeah. was a spot where like just a Midwest spot in general you know for the longest yeah. it seemed like it was like every night no matter what they had fucking live music going like yeah it didn't matter what night of the you know the week it was, it was like, God damn you guys constantly yeah. having shit going. If yeah if if you're in a popular band now and you're in the punk rock scene you probably paid played fireside bowl like yeah. if if you've been a band for 20 years you know like rise right. against afi alkaline trio uh i think fall Out boy probably early on and then i think the last show i saw there was like counterparts and hundredth oh damn like, I, wow. yeah it was it was super fun show and i was it was just cool that i got to like sweat my ass off and act and like actually like be at a show there, you know, because yeah, the last time right. I went, it was, I was like a little kid. I didn't really know what was going on. But, <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, yeah. As far as, you know, continuing with like personal interests and things, you know, uh, a chromosome being a personal favorite track, you know, from, from Lurk and obviously the, the, the album opener, bring us back to an album that you love. Maybe one of your favorites that includes an album opener. That's just an absolute favorite. What comes to mind as far as an album that you love that the opener just comes and, Instant energy every time. Damn. I read this question and I still can't figure out the answer to it, honestly. <laughs> okay. Uh, shit. An album opener. I'm trying to... What album opener? I actually don't know. That's that's fair enough. Through the conversation, yeah. if, if something pops up, it, it, you know, it might come yeah, to. Yeah, well, but... we can circle back. I'll try to, I'll try to remember something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. I, I'm, you know, I'm, and... I'm, I'm... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm also like a, an avid uh, skip to like song three guy. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I I know that kind of goes against me saying earlier that I like to listen to full albums. Yeah, but sure. I don't know why. I just start at, like I'll start like at two, the second song or the third song. It's really oh, weird. Okay. Damn. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. it's one of these things, and you'll probably understand. You know, being in the Midwest there, but like today in Michigan, it's one of like the the first nice days of the year. Finally, the sun's out and it's kind of warming yeah. up a little bit and. I had had it on, you know, shuffle and chromosome actually came on. I was just like, it's oh, just shit. an energy goer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just like a track that goes. And so I always yeah. appreciate that, you know, like having those albums where it's a nice day out and it compliments, you know, when a good song comes that's, out. And shit. That's sick, dude. Love it. <laughs> yeah. we, actually, we had to, we had to change the set around. Cause I think we were, I forgot what we were playing first, but um, it wasn't chromey. And we, we were like, we got to play it first. So like uh, maybe a weekend we changed the set to, basically just the beginning of the record kind of and it oh, just okay. flowed it just opens yeah. that's a that's a good that was a really good uh really good opener i'm super stoked with how that record came out as far as the tracking totally, the totally. Goes, and you know. we'll dig in a little bit here uh with that uh you know sure. before that though 
Uh, how do you get into drums? So you have the interest in music, you have cousins, uh, family members that are, you know, drawing you into different things, uh, you know, interest in pop punk, all sorts of different music genres. But how does it come as far as playing an instrument? Was drums first? I played guitar first. Um, oh, okay. <clears throat> I was a little shit in school, so my mom was not going to shell out for drums. <laughs> Plus, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, so uh, also we just, like, I grew up in an apartment, and um, it just it was just so much easier. Having my cousin, he wanted to play bass, and I was like, fuck it, I'll just play guitar. So I had a shitty, like, Fender knockoff. Um, but I wasn't good. I wasn't really good. Um, <laughs> okay. And uh, I always just, uh, this kid down the street from me and, uh, in Bucktown, had a drum set i had a guitar but we both wanted to switch i got so lucky like that changed my life so i would go over and uh, i would play his drum set he would play my guitar and then i just fucking went off like i just started playing drums like he was <laughs> okay. i think he was he was like maybe six years older than me so i was hanging out with like ho like high school kids when i was oh, in like okay. sixth grade so i was uh i was kind of pushed quickly to play songs um but I got very lucky with him being there because I didn't own I didn't own a drum set until I was like nineteen. So I oh had, damn I man. got lucky with like my friends around me like shelling out for me and shit. So that but, <laughs> that yeah, really I is. got yeah I got super lucky. Like there was no possible chance that we would have had a drum set <laughs> just room <laughs> okay. and money and shit like that. So I got lucky, yeah. but um, okay. But I playing guitar first has taught me how to think about songs and hear melody as opposed to like where the as opposed to just rhythms and shit and like where the song needs to go mm. um um like melodically mm. so it, it really does help with writing and i i've noticed that more so now than like being in a metalcore band or anything like that before because we're a, you know pretty melodic rock band so yeah um yeah. i i can touch back and you know oh this 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 uh chord progression should go here and the drums should just shut up, you know, and let that sing and and shit like that. So, it's nice having that that balance and being able to do both. It you know, and, and totally just to, even as a listener, you know, there's certain moments where it's like even like a cool chunky bass line that's going, the drums kind of tone down. There might not even be guitar, or there's like a cool oh, yeah. like keyboard lead. You know, it's like that. That is oh, yeah. you know that, that is something that I've noticed with the band that I've appreciated too. Where sometimes it's like this like nasty you know cool uh, i mean like with see-through that i i posted up you know when like i posted the uh the 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 story there you know and kind of like the intro like uh a uh, solo part that you kind of do you know going into things is real fast and heavy and uh you know i that is one yeah. thing i i certainly appreciate is kind of letting uh you know letting the music breathe every once in a while yeah. and having something you know having shine it's like okay everything else kind of yeah. toning down and yeah dude i, I love it, that for sure it's awesome it's, it's hard to do as a drummer <laughs> It is. Those dudes have taught me a lot too, like to just chill out and not, not go, not like my, my attitude's always been like, fuck you. I'm going to play as hard and fast. And I'm going to do, do dumb shit. That's not on the record. Cause it's cool. Yeah. But when you're trying to like get the songs across, it doesn't come off well. Yeah. And like, you know, you're prone to fucking up more and shit like that. So they've, they've uh, taught me, to, to really just chill out and like play to the song, let the song breathe. And yeah. And so we can do stuff like that. So it can come across like that instead of just fucking <laughs> right. going, going, going haywire. But yeah. And even through the initial demo, you know, as through like, uh, as far as even with like, even now with around the sun, you know, with the demo is almost a little bit more of like a punk feel to things. It was kind of totally. you know, faster, a little more in your face and, uh, you know, through the years, I think maybe even at Electroshock was where it was like, oh, okay, they're kind of like scaling back, finding their yeah. own pace with things. It doesn't necessarily have to be that still fucking yeah. sick. Uh, so, yeah, Thank I you. appreciate that for sure. It's awesome. Thank you. So, so where, where you mentioned when, when you're 19, your first, or 18, when your first uh, drum kit came in to, you know, play, what, what yeah. was that kit that you ended up getting? That was actually the sonar. Ooh, shit. Yeah, that, okay. was, that was actually the stoner. My good friend Marcos, who was uh, who eventually played bass in uh, of Glaciers, mm. um, he was he's been my like guy through music, um, like post all the pop punk stuff, like all the like um, we were in a band called For Those Who Died Sacred. It was like early. Um, we were like super fans of like the Chariot and Under Oath and stuff like that. He actually oh. bought. He actually bought the band a timeless star classic um 
And that was like my first kind of drum set, but I didn't own it. Like he bought it for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. like the, the sonar was my, like I bought that shit on Craigslist for $300. I got Whoa. the white sparkle one. Yeah. It was Whoa. crazy. I got, yeah, the, the, the person didn't know what they had, what they had. It was wild. <laughs> it was in fucking mint condition, dude. It was brand, well, no, it was brand new, practically. Uh, it came two floor toms, too. It had the, like, the infamous 22 by 20 oh. bass drum. <clears throat> Shit. Small rack. Damn, I, was, I, I was like, I just came up. And that was right before, like, OCDP started that Travis Barker line. It was the mm. same kit. It was the exact same kit, same shells. The hardware was matte black. Um, I rode that thing into the ground. I put that <laughs> shit. I put it through hell. There's that. Uh, um, there's like a chunk of the base uh, base drum hoop missing, and I never changed it out. I just kept moving it. So at some point, <laughs> okay. yeah, it, it's, yeah. That was my first kit, man. It, it yeah, felt good. Here. It felt it felt fucking cool to have. That was my drum set, you know. Totally. It, was that so, your? What, do you still have it, or was that something that you? Yeah. Sense? No, I still have it. Um, it's uh, Kevin, since the band started, Kevin bought a house and stuff with his wife. So um, he records, he has space for it. So mm. I, was, I just let, let him have it. Not let him have it. It's, it's at his It's at his house. So I think we might okay. record our like our future demos and shit there. So I get to I'll okay. play my drum set at one point. But Okay. All right. Yeah. My my phone just wanted to turn off and turn back on, I guess. Uh, that's hey, never happened before. <laughs> so, got, got a little tired, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. But thank I, I checked to see uh, just to make sure that it saved that first part because I was like, motherfucker, I just deleted all. But it, it actually saved it. So thank God. We, we still have all that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, no, I, um, I, 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 like, touched back on the video and heard myself talking. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so as... Uh, uh, and, and there's a there's a picture that you would posted on Instagram here. Uh, it looks like it was like back in 2012 of a picture showing the left side. You had had this wild setup of like a hi hat. You had a china, a crash, some different symbols set up. Tell us about some of your your favorite setups over the years, and you know where some of the inspiration came from as far as you know differing or differing uh, setups for your symbols. Um, that that era was a lot of August Burns Red and like Periphery. Oh, okay. so Matt okay. Hepburn had a lot of stacks. That was when his like, <clears throat> that was way back in the day. So that was before he, I think that was before he was on Minel. So he would mm. just play super cracked, fucked up cymbals. And I <laughs> respected that because I was broke. And I always had to check them. <laughs> right. um, so that, that first iteration of that was just a, a, a crappy, um, fuck, what was it? It was a, a, a Zildjian Oriental 18 inch. I think with them with a hi hat, a turn like an upside or, or a bottom hi hat in it, mm -hmm. with a, with an, another crash on top of it, just to get that <laughs> tick sound. Okay, yeah. okay. Which I later <laughs> found out you could, which I later found out you could do with smaller symbols, and it doesn't like cost you as much energy. Um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, I had that, and then even up to malintent, I still used the zil bell. So like, I love to just do oh, like okay. quick quick flam accents but do that with with you know with that uh accent china and and, and the zil bell um and honestly that's kind of where i stopped i kept it pretty simple um i've always just had ride crash crash china and then that the auxiliary uh accent china oh, okay. um i never really fucked with splashes or anything like that um i like to like stop symbols a lot so i would just do that and i would be able to kind of get what I wanted out of out of that simple setup. Oh, okay, um, nice. That's kind of the extent of where I where I went with that. Because um, I would have just went crazy if I had more symbols. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it touched on that. At one point, you had had a stack with three different symbols. Did you ever put more than three, or was that like the that, that was, was like the, the max? That was the max, man. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I couldn't keep going. I uh, <laughs> I think I think I tried to do that, but it. it it, honestly, it, it just came out of necessity, dude. Like I, yeah. I, I, I had chinas that were cracked that I needed to play. I couldn't get more chinas, and I figured mm -hmm. if I stack them, um, and if I ch put something underneath it, it'll it'll have something. Another symbol will make it louder. Basically, was my idea, and then, and then it turned into me. Oh, this sounds cool. It's a quicker symbol that I could just hit to like get to the other china to open up something else in a bridge or to get to that 
that breakdown, you know, and then just kind of yeah. hit it every time I'm like in and out of the other China or out of like out of the breakdown. <laughs> it's just something to have, you know, to fill space with. I did that a lot in those glaciers. Like we okay. did, I did, I did a lot of that. If you listen to that record, it's it's a lot of me finding little weird spots that I that I just use that accent. Okay. Accent in China is yeah. okay. I, I, and, and I appreciate, love it. You know, like hearing stuff like that, just because it's like I, I feel like any drummer that listens to that stuff, whether in a successful band or just you know playing in the in the garage or whatnot, like they fall into that moment, you know, where it's like initially, like you know, the drums are so shiny and beautiful, and you're drooling over it, and then it's like you buy yeah. the thing and you realize that one symbol is five hundred bucks. You know, you're like, yeah, dude, what did I yeah. do? <laughs> yeah, me, me and. Uh, Chris and I from Drug Church were talking on tour. We had the same 23 inch sweet ride. And oh, he nice. uh, okay. he cracked his shit like <clears throat> he cracked it two and a half weeks in, three weeks in. And I was like, Oh, this man, is just that... recently. Yeah, this is just recently. Oh man. And I was like, damn man, that sucks. I'm like, when's mine gonna crack? In the back of my mind, I'm like, fuck, it's <laughs> right. coming. I'm right. like, damn, now uh Yeah, and then mine literally cracked three days later. And I was like, fuck, that's a four hundred dollar symbol. Whoa, so, no but, shit. but, uh, that's why you get the warranty kids. That's why you get the got to do it. Is. So you can just you switch know? it out. But yeah, they're fucking expensive. Man. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, was, the this, hardware. was this a Zildjian? The yeah, sweet ride? Zildjian, Zildjian okay. 23 inch sweet ride. Probably Yowch. the best, probably the best crash ride symbol ever made. Honestly, not a big yeah. Zildjian fan just cause I like to go against the grain, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great symbol, man. It's just oh, man. it hurts. It hurts your heart when you fucking see it. Crack. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But I hit really hard though, so I I get it. I know. Yeah. I know. I know it's coming at some point. At some point, but it's like you just keep on wishing. You're like, boy, oh boy, I feel bad that the only time I pray is when my shit starts kind of like splitting or something like that. But yeah. please, Lord, hear me today. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be like in between a song, you're like, fuck, oh, this is going to crack. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I learned, I learned to uh, do a cymbal check at like after I put, or after we play, I'll like run my hands around the cymbal, like I'll spin the cymbal. And just hope that it's, there's no crack in there. <laughs> just oh, so man. I know after I play yeah. it. But yeah, it, it's a good I've, idea. I've been okay. very lucky. Yeah, like post show, just to check. <clears throat> but I've been, yeah. I've been very, I've been very, very lucky uh, recently. I've also been chilling out. <laughs> right. so, right. You know, with time comes experience. You know, and and, and over yeah. time, you're like, well, maybe I'll check this shit before I, you know, set up the next show, and I realize that my shit's yeah. split in half. You know, yeah. I, either or, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as you know your first band so you know you, you mentioned some of the earlier stuff tell us about your first band uh that went out and, and actually played a show or maybe it was in the garage and you played in front of people how did that experience go and was it something that was stressful did you were you excited for it was it fun how did that go it was really fun um i mean i was in this band called race scene with my cousin this is like uh this is a long time ago this is we were super young um, our friend Dave, who plays in Real Friends, was a uh, guitar player. I played guitar. Okay. My cousin sang, and then our friend Andy played drums. <laughs> but we would just always throw like little garage shows. Like they were, they're all from like the south suburbs, so they're high school. And again, I wasn't even in high school yet, and they were, they were all in high school, so they would like. It was the age of flyers, so they would just send out. They would like pass flyers yeah. out and shit. I actually still have a couple in my in my bedroom, but oh man. Um, Rules. Yeah, we would we would we would just play our own shit. We would uh, set up in the garage. We had PA, luckily. <laughs> and, Damn. Uh, and then um, yeah, then we would just play like to the opening and have kids come up and stuff. And we would do that. And um, there was a lot of stuff like that. Like on my friend Glenn, who was in a lot of my, we uh, played in his garage, and then oh. just a lot of garage okay. shows out here. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What What about the first time recording and and being able to hold the physical release of something, uh, you know, that you played on, whether it was guitar or ended up being drums? Uh, what was that? And you know, where where was it as as cool as you would imagine when you first heard it, or did it end up kind of sounding shitty? Uh, what was it exciting? How did that go? We it, same same band same with Racine. It okay. actually sounded really good. We uh, that's actually when I learned that I should not be playing guitar. 
because I was just not good. <laughs> like, trying to like, record guitar. Like, I'm, like, trying to just down pick all this simple, easy stuff. And I was like, this is not working. I think I think Dave, Dave Knox ended up recording most of the guitar on that. <laughs> and then two of my songs that I wrote and sang on did not land on the record because it was bad. Like, I couldn't sing <laughs> Oh, no. Um, okay. But re- I just remember getting yelled at. Uh, by the sound, by the engineer, because me and my cousin were, uh, we had our headphones on and we were listening to uh, our drummer like play the drum parts, but we're also like harmonizing with each other, like because we're we're young, you know, we're like little fucking shitty kids. Uh-huh. So, but we're like singing in front of the drum set, and he just the sound guy goes, "Shut the fuck up," because <laughs> <laughs> we're like. Oh. Like singing to the, it was just, <laughs> yeah, it was fun, man. It it sounded it sounded sick. The record was really good, but um, oh man, that's but, funny. Yeah, it was cool. I remember the studio smelled like cheese. This guy, I, this guy, like never left his basement. I guess for some reason. <laughs> oh, oh god, um, it was weird. It was musky down there, but uh, <laughs> it was cool. It was, I I had a blast. I love recording. That like kind of set the tone to just be in there and like find your tones find your niche like you hear the songs in a different way okay so that was a that was a good that was a good experience it, it really like set me set me set me off i was like i want to do it more yeah sure so, okay. um, is there is anything here. as as far as the process with like whether writing or recording or going out in the like getting ready to play a show is there anything you know that kind of starts feeling like a little not to say a job or work but like has a little stress behind it you know like myself like going in the studio for whatever reason that's like the time where i'm like all right i gotta kind of buckle down here i gotta you know make sure that i'm doing all this shit and everything else is fun but for whatever reason that part's like uh this really? is my favorite part yeah i don't know yeah. what it is i i love i love the studio uh i okay. used to do i used to have more of a routine before i played mm-hmm. with the glaciers a lot of those drum parts were were pretty pretty hectic I was doing mm. a lot of shit, so I would sit there and I would I would warm up for forty five to an hour before to a click. Just Damn. just I wouldn't like do crazy stuff. I would just have the sticks in my hand though, and, like just mm. playing and trying to loosen up whatever that means. Like I get I get <laughs> when people do it. Like <clears throat> at the same time, like as long as I stretch before I play, those like five minutes right before I go on are so shitty. Like because <laughs> my mind's just going. You know, okay. The la- and the last tour, the last tour, for some for some reason, I just kept rem- like thinking, "Oh shit, how does that part go?" Or like, "Wait, okay. what? What is? Is that how it starts?" Like, "Oh shit, does that song start that way?" And I, I would just fuck with <laughs> okay. myself. So I would right. honestly say the first like that's the most hectic and like weird time for me is like the like the five to ten minutes right before I go on. Okay, I'm like kind okay. of stressing. There's no real routine anymore except just stretching like just trying to stretch it out because my okay. elbows and my shoulders will stick, will get super cramped up and it sucks <laughs> it's not fun okay <clears throat> and it's, what, what about traveling and you know maybe doing like a, a run of out-of-state shows uh you know when did that come about and you know was it a positive experience uh did anything come along that was an on-the-job training for you years later uh of glaciers we did we we toured for far too long one time um, <laughs> okay. but just problem solving problem solving and, and learning to not let things upset you when things go wrong mm-hmm. that's a that was a really big it's good to like, job training like if things are going to go wrong like shit's mm-hmm. going to happen like it's not going to be all butterflies and, and flowers and shit like something some, your band's going to fuck up you're going to lose something <clears throat> shit happens just kind of let yeah. it go you know <clears throat> If it can't get fixed, then that's a fucking problem. But, <laughs> right. but when you cross that bridge, you, you'll cross it eventually. Yeah. So that was okay. that was a big one that I learned. Okay. Tour, okay. Touring back then, and I'll still uh, I'll never forget that. It's it gets harder to let shit go when you're when you're older, but at the same time, like you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Just try not to stress out. Try to keep the camp. Oh, right. with it. Yeah, yeah just sure. roll with it. This is Luna, by the way. <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> normally I, I have my cat. I shut the, I learned to shut the door, but a lot oh, of times yeah. she'd be right behind me and shit. And like, yeah. uh, there was times she's biting my feet. And I'm like, what is happening? This shit doesn't happen ordinarily. You know, That's it's just like when I'm doing man. these and I you know, the attention's not on her. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. It can be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I'm trying to do this shit. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to ask uh, like a serious question and shit. Right. You you had mentioned as far as like a pre show ritual and stretching and different things like that too, but uh, you know, so that was early on as far as you kind of taking 45 minutes to an hour and, and kind of going with, with lurk, it's just more of a stretching routine and kind of, you know, getting warmed up between or before and not getting mm -hmm. too much into your head as far as thinking about it over overly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot okay. of that. Um, I also learned to crush water. Like, <laughs> we're, okay. like we had a lot of long drives, so I couldn't walk, I couldn't drink water like in the van or else I would just be peeing all the time. Yeah. Um, but as soon as I get to the venue, I'll, I just try to drink, like, my hydro flask. I'll try to chug that. And then right before we play, like, an hour before while I'm stretching, I'll, like, I'll try and drink, like, five to six, like, plastic uh, water bottles just to, like, just to have it, just to, like, not get dehydrated. And it's worked out. It's, like, kept me from Damn. from getting tired. My throat would go – My I would start breathing too hard and my throat would hurt. I, I smoke cigarettes mm. too, which I probably I should stop doing. But um, um, yeah, at, at one point, I was yeah, <laughs> I'm a crock, dude. I'm, I'm never gonna not. Uh, yeah, water, water's the big one. That's that's something I learned on this tour too. Is just to drink fucking water. Yeah, Wait, I didn't something, grow, I, what's up? Something recently, uh, someone had mentioned. Um, I played a show like this uh, a few months ago, and I noticed that the dude is just like chomping on gum, just like smashing it while he's playing drums yeah. he came off and we ha started having conversations he's like yeah i got it from dave Grohl. like he dave just Grohl. said yeah, like he years ago that he would just smash on the shit and his his mouth doesn't get dry and i'm like whoa no yeah, yeah. no no shit yeah. <laughs> and it works that's, yeah that's actually really smart because your mouth that's the one thing that sucks is like actually, I have the, i've had the i have the opposite problem where like three songs in and my band will literally attest to this shit i just like start spitting like i just have this, it's, probably, it's honestly now now that i'm saying it out loud it's probably the water i'm probably fucking drinking too much water <laughs> but i'll just start i gotta like spit out man because i just have i have too much saliva this hair uh too much saliva so i'm like yeah oh shit so i need like a a, a patch to soak my mind. <laughs> instead of instead of gum <laughs> has there ever been a point you've had to like stop mid set like i feel like if i drank five or six bottles of water i would be i'd be pissing at least a couple of tracks oh. in oh yeah you you gotta you gotta go multiple times <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there were there were oh, times like my shit. band was on stage and i'm like coming out of the bathroom and it's just like one two three let's go <laughs> yeah yeah that's i mean that's one way to go about it shit for sure yeah. i love that I, uh, I haven't had to like stop though it, it, it's, it's something you can kind of turn on it's like sleeping and knowing yeah. but knowing you have to pee you can kind yeah. of do it you know <laughs> you're like oh, oh i don't piss myself but <laughs> Oh God! So, so uh, I mean, an odd transition from from that. Uh, you know, trying to find a, a way to. Uh, but with with Lurk, where does this Barton kit come from? This thing is absolutely slapping. I, I love the shit out of it. Tell us about you know where uh, you end up grabbing that and the specs of that 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 uh, kit. Um, I just I was tired of the I was tired of my bass drum. That that Sonar's bass drum was just too big. That mm. twenty two by twenty. Mm. It's kind of played out like. We all own that drum set. You know, we all had that <laughs> at one point. We all wanted that cannon. <clears throat> but um, honestly, I was just at uh, Chicago Drum Exchange. And um, the Barton, uh, not, it wasn't an ad, but I just came across it somehow on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the beach shells seemed super warm. Um, they sounded great. They were, it was $1,000 for basically a customized, like, you know, um, like basically a Ludwig style. It was the same size. Right. So it's a um, 22 by 18 bass drum, 16 by 16 floor, and then 13 by, uh, fuck, what is it? By eight? 13. What's the, what's the typical rack size? 13 um, by, uh, by... That sounds right. I, I mean, the I eight or the... Eight. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds it sounds sick. I haven't gotten it to where I want it yet, though. I feel I need to keep switching the heads out. Um, mm. I haven't really been happy with it. Um, I think it's just because our, our practice spot's kind of tiny. But it's not, like, oh. big enough for me right now. It doesn't sound big, at least in my brain. 
Um, do you have coated skins on it, or are they are they clear? I was I was playing clear for a while. I was de definitely a clear guy, mm. um, and then I put uh, uh, coated emperors on there, and it, they oh, sang. Okay. Yeah, that 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 changed up the whole game. They started to. You could really hear the warmth of the drums. They got a little bit louder, but a little bit clearer at the same time. Yeah, Sick. The heads, the heads definitely, definitely changed it. Sure. But, okay. With yeah. within, so you know, we fast forward a little bit here. Twenty seventeen brings Lurks demo. Uh, what can you tell us about you know as far as the, those initial you know uh, practices and writing and what you remember yeah. uh, from the initial riffs or tracks that uh, yeah. created the foundation for the sound yeah. of the band? Magical. Magical. <laughs> uh, we we were uh, so Dan and Kevin and myself were in a band called Nice Things before that. It was okay. like a sho shoegazy, uh, like loved cloakroom, loved like slow jammy shit. But we just played too much. We played our asses off. We played a lot of shows, um, hmm. and just after one show, we all looked at each other and we we're like, "Let's just take a break. We're tired." So uh, Kevin got this. Uh, Kevin got a Fender Strat like six months later, and that's that's that Strat has everything to do with our band. Like it started the band basically. Oh and, shit! Okay. Uh, we went from playing really slow songs to me just doing what I do. I just wanted to play fast, so okay. we just started. He just started riffing. I forgot what we wrote all that shit like in the studio or in the studio at our practice spot like within minutes of us like riffing on the first riff. Like we wrote it really quick. Oh, really? Um, oh, so shit. we didn't even think about, yeah, it was it was like second nature to us. It, it, we didn't really, it didn't take us too long. Um, I just remember like finishing every song and just being like, oh shit, this is, uh, this is cool. This is, this is what I should be playing, you know? Yeah, okay. Like, having done the metalcore shit, having done the beatdown stuff, having done the like hardcore, thing and then the pop punk stuff really early on this was like this just felt like home it felt like oh this is a mixture of alternative rock with punk and mm -hmm. it's just gritty and fast and i'm like this is like this is kind of how i play drums so i was really stoked on it it was it was super cool those yeah. <laughs> those, those those practices were really fun man really cool as far as like it was there initial like within conversations with you guys, was there initial ideas as far as like inspiration or like the type of sound that was out there? Or was it, it like you were mentioning, it was just like riffs started coming out and it's like, well, let's go with this. Yeah, it was, it was, it just Sick. happened. Yeah. We, 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 we kind of, we did that with nice things. We, like we kind of, we chopped it up a lot at, at the practice spot and, and then would write a song and then, or it would have a vibe, but the, the, the demo would lurk. We, I don't really think we talked about much. We just fucking went in there and started writing, mm. like, which is cool. You know, it's nice to just. We were talking through our instruments. <laughs> I, <might say. laughs> I mean, as corny as it is, like you have those times though, like where it, maybe oh, it's yeah. people that you've played with for years, yeah. or if it's just initial ideas and it's like, ah, uh, this kind of sounded cool, and then it flowed into, you know, I yeah. mean, I can certainly attest that there's certain times where it's like, fuck, how did that happen, like. We just wrote yeah. a bunch of shit in a day and like yeah. we have all of this. So yeah, that, that yeah. rules. And it's always so nice. Cause when you have times where you are kind of in a rut, you're like, where the fuck did like five yeah. years ago, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, uh, during the pandemic, we just kept writing and writing and writing and writing, sending each other shit back and forth. And then once we couldn't be in a room together, we got together and, um, well, the record just came out sort of like a year ago. But right. we had already had it for so long, and we already had the songs for so long. But that that rut, we didn't, we're not in that rut. But at the same time, we needed this tour to happen because we're like, kind of don't know what else to do right now. Mm. And then so it's crazy to think back to like those demo days where it was just like, we could have written probably fucking ten more songs, you know? <laughs> right. Like we could have just kept going. They probably wouldn't right. have been great, but we could have. <laughs> I mean, it's still, you know, it is weird, too, because, like, I've caught myself at times being at shows, like, even within the last, like, year or so, someone who released an album in 2020 or even 2021, you know, and it's like, hey, guys, like, when are you guys, you guys writing some new stuff? What do you have new? And it's like, oh, we just released an album on, uh, uh, fucking, uh, half a yeah. year ago, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm it, sorry. It, 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 yeah, it, yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> kind of feel uh, bad. <laughs> it's, uh... It's definitely weird, man, because we, I mean, 2020, 
we got home and we recorded the record and then fucking all hell broke loose and you couldn't go anywhere. And we were, we were pissed because with our career, we feel like we've had stuff just sitting. Like even the demo sat for a while. Hi-Fi oh, okay. sat for a while before they got released. We were just waiting on like record labels or, or having the vinyl or just trying to figure out time wise. And the mm. next thing you know, you're, you have this record for a year and we're like, fuck, no one's heard it. You know? <laughs> yeah, right, and then, right. and then, and then you, the record comes out, and you're like, "Fuck, I'm tired of it." <laughs> like, <laughs> right, because you you play them so you play the songs so much already at practice spot, but you haven't played them in front of anybody. So that's like yeah. a weird, it's a weird mind fuckery where you're like, "Okay, no, this, there's there's still good songs." Yeah, I think. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, they it, are. It's got to be an odd like juxtaposition as far as playing something as much as you have. Uh, and feeling like at this point your motley crew who, who have played the the hits for twenty years, you know, and yeah. but then all of a sudden people haven't even heard these songs live, so it's like yeah. this whole brand new experience where you know you're kind of thinking that these cats like know all the lyrics, and it's like why aren't these people singing along? Like that, yeah, they don't fucking know the song. Yeah, yeah they don't know what song is that. <laughs> I've had, yeah. I've, yeah, I've wild. had this, yeah, it's it's weird, but it's also cool. It's cool to see the see the lights the light go on in people's heads like when yeah. we start a lot of people don't necessarily know what's coming because 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 the name and then just you know it's just like a weird kind of a weird vibe mm -hmm. but three three songs in people are like oh shit okay i understand this now so you you can definitely I, i'm a big uh i like to stare at people when i play drums because it's funny <laughs> <laughs> and i like doing faces at them and shit i like doing it oh um, and you could see, yeah, you you could see the light switch go off, and you know, there's been, you know, <laughs> it's, it's cool, it's cool. Oh my god, I, I hate like digging into like absolute complete personal stories because the shit isn't about me. But it's funny that you say that because I have a lot of times that I, I have a habit of standing up when there's like maybe like a heavier part or some shit, and I'm not playing, and I'll oh, have yeah. my drumsticks and I'll point at people, and I just That's... think it's funny. And the rest of my my band's like, why the fuck? Or I'll like flex or something stupid, and they're like. Why do you do that shit? That's I'm like, fucking awesome. I don't know. Dude. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. So you Hell saying yeah, that. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll like, yeah. I'll, oh, I'll, shit. I'll stare at, like, there'll be a part coming. Like if I like choke something and I'll just like stare at someone when I do it and then like <laughs> smile at them. And then they do that like look around shit where they're just like, is he yeah. looking at me? And I'm this like, yeah, awkward. I'm looking at you, dude. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> It's like, yeah, I see oh you. my god! You're looking That's at me. Fucking I'm awesome! At you too. This is perfect. Yeah. God damn, I love that. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> glad, so, I'm glad you don't find it fucking weird. No, I, that you just said that. Like I said, I I don't like you know digging into like a whole bunch of shit. You know, you listen to some interviews sometimes. It's like, oh my band and this and I do that. Like, I don't. I, this isn't about. Me. I feel you. But uh, that was funny that uh, <laughs> you said that. I had to include that shit. Um, <laughs> So from this, from, you know, from the demo and kind of talking the earlier days, I just wanted to dig into, uh, you know, as far as maybe a story or a particular favorite track that you have starting with the demo and kind of working through your guys' career up into uh, Around the Sun, uh, where, you know, in Around the Sun, we're going to talk about some certain aspects of the album. A little bit more in depth, but uh, starting with the demo, bring us back to a track uh, that comes to mind as far as maybe a personal favorite or something that, that you really had fun writing drums to and, uh, you know, kind of tell us about the track. Heard man sticks out for sure. Okay. Um, just the it's just a straightforward fucking the way it starts. We changed it a lot live too. We we do it kind of differently. Um, but writing mm. that it it just felt so natural when it when we wrote it. It's just fucking punchy. It just yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, that's probably one of my favorite songs to play, and probably off the demo. Um. If Brainless is on the demo, I think too. Dude, yeah, so okay. On demo. Um, we play Brainless live still. Um, that oh, was, sick. Okay. Yeah, we played on the tour, uh, and the ending of that song like slows down and goes mm -hmm. into that like slow shoegaze kind of thing, and that for every time we play it live to this day, I like smile a little bit because it's like you get to see what the band was before it was Lurk in that song oh okay and you get to okay. hear nice things in that song like we would have done something like that in nice things but that was all that was just a that was a very early song that, that song's sick i love playing that song live sometimes it's a little weird and you don't think anyone's gonna know it but we actually had like we had a lot of kids singing that shit it was wild damn i don't, I don't think rules. people still listen to the demo so that was, that was, <laughs> okay. that was cool yeah okay. is sick 
What, what about hi fi? Uh, hi fi, let's think. I, I got to say that the title track of, you know, of Lurk, you know, and like the, the part where yeah. it comes in that they're chanting, like that part, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, these guys, they got it. This yeah. is it, dude. <laughs> yeah. When Kevin came with the lyrics, I was like, dude, that's fucking crazy. I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, that, that's hard. That's a hard yeah. move. Yeah. Um, we play that live, too, still. Um, that that's a good that's that kind of encompasses the whole fucking the whole EP honestly it's fast it's to the point there's like kind of not a chorus in there it's just the yeah, same riff right. the whole time it's a it's a very lurk song like we 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 just play we give you two riffs and then then we're out of there <laughs> um, and to bring it back to staring that's some that's a song that I I like just <laughs> I just mean mug the fuck out of people when we're playing that song. Cause it's just the same thing the whole time, you know. So then I'll just and then I'll do it with one hand. I'll go four times <laughs> there and I'll just stare, I'll just stare at you. Yeah. Oh shit, that rules! I love that. <laughs> I actually, I haven't listened. I haven't listened to Hi-Fi in quite a while. I should go back and and I should have listened to it before we talked. Yeah, we it's great. Back. No, no, no. That's that that's perfect. I, I love that right there. What what about Electroshock? That that uh, EP fucking rules too. Electroshock. Honestly, the. The, again, the title track. Um, when we wrote that, it was like fucking electricity. Like mm-hmm. we, it, it just we totally were listening to some '80s shit for sure. Uh, but it's it's one of my favorite songs because it's so drum forward and so drum heavy. Like mm-hmm. it it it's just fun as fuck to play, <laughs> and it, and it and it it again it encompasses like the other four songs but it, it it brings you back to that that hi-fi vibe the the demo vibe um and it's just the ending is a really cool drum part i love yeah, that. yeah. Uh, uh, so touching touching on that are you hitting on the rims at the end there or is that the hi-hat this is really nerdy and but i mean i've got you here i might as well fucking ask eh? uh like with the when i do like that dun, 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 the part the it's almost like a i'm trying to think of the da 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 Just before you go back into the initial like first riff. Uh, I think it's I think it's the ride. You mean like the ending? The ending ending? Yeah. It goes into the the breakdown part. Just before it goes back into like the da 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 catch the rock catch catch the crash and then i do like the on the ride so it's ride hits yeah oh shit okay yeah okay. but it, I... they're really close to the bell so it sounds chicky it doesn't sound like a ride oh okay yeah. <laughs> okay yeah because I, I, i've like messed around with playing along with that before and i like i'll do like like i say like the the hoops and i listen and i'm like well, that's not it and i fucking hit the high yeah. end i'm like well that's a little too like yeah close si- sounding like what the fuck is he doing so yeah it's the sick ride. it's the ride yeah. all right sweet sweet well, what about Around the Sun? So this is, you know, the, the most recent, you guys, uh, you have the, the full length here. Uh, you know, what, what, can you, what can you tell us as far as comes to mind uh, from, from the album here? Uh, Strut is probably one of my favorite songs on that. Um, just how, like, dreary and slow it starts, and it just kind of has, has the rim clicks, and it's just drums <laughs> in the beginning. Okay. With that fucking guitar tone. Um, <laughs> I love that, yeah. Some of the fucking some of my favorite guitar tones I've I've been a part of or been on a record with or on that record. Uh, okay. Struts fucking cool. Bermuda is awesome. Yes, um, those drums those those drums were really fun to play. We like we dropped the tu- the tuning on the head super super low, uh, super wide open fat snare. Um, and the cymbals sound crazy. I don't know what I don't know what um what Andy did, but he made everything just sounds dry and like, it just, it sounds really fun. It doesn't, and it doesn't sound like anything else on the record. Yeah. Right. Uh, Yeah. It's like everything is real wavy and kind of dreary. Um, You were mentioning as far as like with the toms and drop and everything, was that like just to get like a flatter sound of it not being so like resonant or flatter sound. And we just wanted to, the way the guitars, the way we knew the guitars were going to end up being recorded and sounding. We just wanted to make it sound like almost bigger in a way, but also flat. 
So a oh, lot of the okay. mics are being used on that, from what I like to believe. Um, but also, oh, some people are moving out of our apartment today. Um, <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, it was just the first time, too, that I got to play. I got to actually fucking, like, fuck with tuning. Because before, you just go oh, okay. in, you hammer stuff out. So right. in Bermuda, I was like, let's let's get weird. So I remember, <laughs> us, I remember us dropping the tuning on the snare a little bit. And then going, uh, this isn't low enough. Then dropping it a little bit more and going, let's go a little bit more. And then tr- and drop. And then it was like, it, f- it felt like paper, like hitting paper. That's how loose the, all, the, all the heads were. Yeah, it was fucking wow. cool. It came Damn. out. It's, it sounds cool. I'm, I'm very, yeah. very, very proud of that drum tone. Everything else went fine after you went to go crank that bitch back up, or was it like, yeah. ah, yeah. might need to Surpri- toss another one on here? <laughs> Surprisingly, I don't think we changed the head on the entire time we were we recorded that record. Yeah, we also we also got those drums done pretty quick. I think it took like three days. Oh, that was okay. the, that's the longest I've ever taken to do that. But it was just because we were we were changing tunings and you know doing fun stuff, all the yeah. changing okay. snares. So, I think, <laughs> there's almost i think there's a different snare on almost every song well no shit yeah i think we i i think we went we kind of went crazy we had a lot of snares it was fun <laughs> oh my I've, never God. Done that, I've never done that before after yeah mixing, no kidding yeah after mixing and mastering it kind of all sounds the same here and there but uh-huh. yeah we definitely changed up the snares on every bucket. oh shit. We, had the, wow. we, had the, we had the time <laughs> and he's yeah. like can you pick one or are we just gonna yeah. fucking use all of these he, like he, he just because they have 20 doesn't mean you have to use want, them yeah he wanted, <laughs> he wanted to do it too he was like fuck it let's just see and i'm like all right and then after like the oh, second damn. after the second song i was like yes let's do it again let's change this <laughs> okay okay uh, and, and i mean i guess it's complimentary too because it's not like when you know because sometimes you, you listen to something and it's almost obvious where it's like oh, they didn't record this whole thing together or they recorded like in parts or, you know, had to replace such and such. And you're like, oh, why does this sound so much different? But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's some that's some pretty wild magic that, you know, like unless I guess if I listen to it again and I knowing this now I'll look back and I'm like, oh, maybe there's a little more ping here or something. But, um, yeah, yeah. So, so touching on that, I wanted to dig into, you know, some of the specs as far as what you use for the recording of Around the, the Sun. Um, you know, as far as the, the, the kit there. So you had the, the Barton kit or did you use a, a studio kit? That was Andy's fucking awesome shine kit that he's had forever. Uh, mm. I, I also that shine drum set that's in his studio has been on everything that I've done since oh, Mal- really? okay. since Malintent. Even the Malintent record, oh, shit. uh, has, is that same shine kit. Um, it's just like a old, it's a maple kit with, uh it's really big it's got like a 24 by 18 kick so it's fucking huge um and then it, it's got like a six i think it's a 16 by 18 floor top it's big um but yeah no we used uh we used those rack toms the whole time uh we changed out the bass drum here and there he mm-hmm. has this lud he has this old like i think it's a 70s or 80s ludwig bass drum that we used um <clears throat> i think we did that we used that in bermuda or on Bermuda. Um, it, it, it just stayed the same. Um, honestly, the symbols, I don't remember. It was kind of a mix and match. I, I, I was kind of broke around that time, so I was just kind of like borrowing symbols from people. And <laughs> okay. if, if, it, if it crashed, it crashed. Like, if, yeah. it, ro- if it was a ride, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do okay. it. Um, that was like right around the time I started playing smaller symbols too. I went, I scaled back. And I, I went like 18, 19, uh, 23. I kept the 23 big, but. Oh. Okay. Um, and then I just had shitty hi hats that record. I don't really remember. They were totally mismatched hi hats. <laughs> yeah. They sound good. I, they sound washy, man. Dude, I, I was going to say, I mean, everything sounds solid. <clears throat> so it's not like it's, uh, you know, yeah. anything that anybody would ever know. Uh, you know, I, I think I just always appreciate as a drummer hearing things like that because it's like, boy. I, I feel like every fucking drummer is just in that situation. Hey, yeah. God damn it, my top hi hat cracked again. Now, what am I going to use? I'm going to just go yeah. try to find it. That's what I did for the tour. Right before tour, I just went around uh, <clears throat> crappy guitar stores, and I was like, I just need a 14 inch shitty cymbal. I just want to. I just want to spend eighty dollars. I know I'm going to crack okay. this thing again. You know. So. Right. Right. 
Damn, that's awesome. Look, man, this is a, I do have one more question here, but yeah. before yeah. we, you know, we get on that, uh, you know, what do you guys have coming up? Uh, you know, what, do you guys have anything as far as on the road? You know, I don't want to leak anything here or have anything that you're not supposed to be talking about, but uh, we do. What, uh, what's new? We, we do have, um, we have a little Midwest, like three Midwest states coming up. Um, oh, okay. They're not, they're not uh, out yet. So I won't speak on that, but it'll it, at some point they'll come out. Um, and then uh, we're going to do something here at home for an after show for a, a street fest. That'll come out probably. I don't know. These things are all really fresh. So, I don't, so sure. I'm not really sure when we're going to release the, the dates and, and who we're playing with. But um, it's, I don't think it's awesome. that big of a deal. But <clears throat> but they're going to be fun. I'm stoked. We don't, um, we're, And we're just trying to figure out what to do for fall at this point. So okay. <clears throat> we're still kind of seeing what's go- seeing who's wants to take us out or or we might just book something ourselves too and go diy so fuck yeah it's balls awesome. in our court at this point so yeah <laughs> we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see what happens as long as no more rides crack you know what i'm saying like hopefully that shit kind of scales back yeah and, uh, you, you get, see me get some shows like a, going like a jazz drummer next time you see me play live. <laughs> just try not to break shit why is pedro playing the the, the traditional style yeah, even yeah. that. I've, there's some drummers that beat the shit out of their drums, uh, even playing the. Yeah, uh, I can't think of what the fuck that that uh, hand position is called now. I, I don't uh, know. Traditional. Is it traditional? traditional I said that. I didn't. I didn't know if it was if that was correct. Traditional grip. Either, yeah. either way, yeah, yeah, traditional grip. There you go. <laughs> All right. So wrapping up here, if it, it, we, you know, we talked to you know as far as as, as Tony Hawk being something, uh, you know, Dave Hoffman. Uh, you know, BMX being something as far as the soundtracks. Let's say there's a new Tony Hawk video game coming out, and they ask Lurk to to premiere a track or to have a track off of uh, anything that you chose. You can have one song along with four other bands that you choose. Who's going to be on this soundtrack? So you can have one Lurk song that you choose and four other bands that uh, of anything of your choosing. Who would be on this soundtrack? Damn. Uh, Drug Church for sure. Oh, uh, dude. I fucking Probably love one them. Of the, one of the sickest bands live. They fucking sound so good live. It was like <laughs> uh, Drug Church. I'm trying to think who else. Let's throw a curveball in there. Some like old architect shit. Just heavy. Fans. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I'm trying to think what else have I been fucking listening to lately. You got to throw a Blink song on there. I'm, I'm just going to do it. I know I don't need it, but, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would. That's what I would go with. That's Love what I it. listen to anyway. So. <laughs> All, right. All right. What what will uh, lurk song would you have on there if you can choose to have one? Shit, probably a new one. I know it's kind of stupid to say, but. Um, I mean, promote the album. Nothing. Nothing shameful about that. Shit. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> honestly, I feel like open world like tony hawks when you can when you're like when you can actually when they finally let you just skate around yeah. like hearing hearing strut in the background would be super sick yeah <laughs> it's like kind of it's it's like kind of slow and dreary still yeah so you can just it's like skating on a rainy day you know <laughs> that'd, that'd, that'd be cool to hear that wow, man, for sure do so cool look pedro this has been absolutely fucking awesome man thank you once again thank you, uh so appreciative uh i'm hoping to catch you guys unfortunately this last uh run that you did with drug church uh, i had to miss and i'm fucking bummed about it but hopefully i can make it to this uh next run of shows that you guys yeah, have going yeah. on and i'm stoked know, to man. see you we'll, we'll get you in there dude thank you so totally, much totally thank you once again uh well like i say i appreciate it anybody that was watching if you haven't seen the whole thing it'll be on youtube here within this next month uh and i'll have it on there promoting on here as well so cool. i appreciate it man and uh thank you man thank look you. forward to everything new you take Bye. care. Thank you. Thank you, man, brother. Thank you. <laughs> See you, man. See you. He's a lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi, lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, baby, baby, baby. Lo-fi horror guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.